Ladies and gentlemen, this Red Game Center Com video. Let's discuss the fact that AMD are going to be indeed launching the R9 380X in February. And not only that, they've also confirmed the existence of the 390X as well as the 370X. So there's three cards. We're going to start things off with the 380X, however. Um, because we know that that is indeed going to be competing directly with like the 980 and 970s. So the 380, I'm just going to call it the 380, it's actually 380X, but all of these cards have the X suffix at the end. So just know that they're all Xs. Um, but yeah, so the, free, the, the 380 is going to be based on the Pirate Island microarchitecture and is going to be powered by the Fiji. This is completely opposite to what we originally thought. It goes against the grain because previously we had thought that the 390 is going to be based on the Fiji. But this is basically not the case according to AMD. And I guess they kind of know better than we do. So, moving on to the second card in this little slew of uh, love would be the 390, once again, X. This is based on Bermuda. Now, the 390, um, I'm sorry, the 380 were based on 3G and the 370 were based on Treasure Island. So, the 390 is actually going to be quite a monster. Apparently that's going to be competing with like the 980 Ti and the Titan X. But here's, here's where it gets really exciting for me. And I have to admit, you know, I'm kind of gushing at the thought. Um, they're going to be 20 NM. That's the, the murmured, this is what we're hoping for. They're aiming at 20 NM. Previously, Maxwell hadn't. They'd missed it. They'd, they'd gone to 28 NVIDIA Maxwell. Uh, the reason for this was because basically the process... Um, they hadn't refined the processing down enough to where the yields were good enough to use 20. AMD are coming in in February, and so that definitely gives TSMC more time to mature their process. So hopefully, hopefully it will be 20 NM. So that's quite nice. That's what I consider to be fairly exciting. But the really, oh my goodness, and the thing that's probably making me extremely excited, well, the most excited, would be the fact that they are going to be um, having 3D stacked HBM memory. The fact it saying HBM memory is fairly redundant um, because, well, the M stands for memory, but regardless, uh, HBM it stands for high bandwidth memory just so that we're all clear. Uh, I'm going to cover HBM in a different video. I'm going to try and do it today. The reason I'm going to do it in a different video is quite frankly, it's quite a complicated topic and there's actually been some movement regarding HBM that I'd like to cover. Additionally, the reasons as to why HBM are required. I'm going to very briefly go in this video, but I do want to cover it further, as I said, in another video where I can actually provide a lot more um, examples and so on. However, HBM is pretty much the future of graphics cards. Um, we all know this. The fact that we're moving towards high resolution displays. Pretty much, if, if we're looking for like multi monitor displays um, or 4K upwards with the next generation games, really HBM is the way to go because of the extra bandwidth that it affords. So, Here's the here's the really odd part of this uh, conundrum, if you will. Remember how a while back I I did report that we'd seen the first cooler, the first image of the 380 or the 390. We wasn't sure which, but there was a cooler that was leaked. This has actually been confirmed that this will be the cooler. It's going to be of the R9 390. Once again, the X. Um, it's known as the Hydra cooling solution. It's a hybrid. Now, this is the weird part for me. What does this mean for the car's actual operating temperatures and clock speeds? There's definitely an argument to be made that smaller manufacturing, um, as particular higher voltages and higher clocks, can definitely start to raise the heat. Um, but obviously we don't know the final temperatures. It's possible that AMD just don't want a repeat of the 290s or the 290X in particular, which is fairly understandable because they got a lot of flack for that, particularly for those manufacturers that were using reference designs on the on the earlier drivers, um, the noise and heat primarily, and thermal throttling. But we're just going to have to wait on that one because obviously they're not 
ready to unveil the number of shaders and so on. The fact that the 380X is going to be competing against the 980, 970, they've basically said it's going to be between them. You have to make your own mind up on what that means. It could be that it's going to be aimed at the 980's performance but costs the same as the 970, or it could be that it's literally just a couple of the percentage points above the 970, or whatever. Having said that, if you look at the reviews of Maxwell, the 980 and the 970 aren't leagues apart anyway. They're not. I mean, it's to the point where you can overclock the 970 and you can be getting roughly the same performance of a 980 without too much difficulty. Particularly if you're lucky in the Silicon Lottery and you get a good clocking 970. Now I'm going to discuss something that's a little bit more theoretical but I definitely need to talk about it because some viewers have asked me my opinions on this. Primarily, what GPU shall you get um, and should I should you buy Maxwell um, and so on. So th there's a few problems I've got right now. Maxwell has 4 gigs of RAM which is good but and it's not that I've gotten over against the Maxwell architecture, I think it's pretty impressive. I just don't think it's that impressive in terms of a performance leap over Kepler. Um, if you've got a high-end Kepler, for example, let's just assume, for the sake of argument, you don't have the 780 tied, let's say you've got the 780, and or equivalent from AMD. Is it worth you jumping on Maxwell? Well, I'm owning, I, I own a 780 tie, and I've got the 3 gig model, and here's the problem I've got. The Evil Within and other next-generation games are supposedly going to be 4 gigs, but... I'm hearing rumours that those games, actually certain games, not all of them, but some games are going to have like a 6 gig requirement if you want to use the texture packs. Now, the fact that we're on these next generation consoles means that the PC ports can naturally look a lot better than they ever did on the Xbox 360 and PS3. So what we can get now are assets that are far and away better than the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One because all they can do is simply downsize the textures as required for those systems in other words, so it fits in their RAM. But because we're playing on high resolution displays anyway, um, which naturally increases the size of the frame buffer as well as assets and so on, particularly if you're dealing with like higher resolution textures and higher resolution shadows, and sod knows how taxing VR is really going to be at the end of the day. The basic bottom line that I'm trying to tell you guys is that we don't really know what the requirements are for the next generation GPUs. So here's the argument that I've been kind of toying with myself. It's like an internal debate I keep having. Do I stick with the 780 tie for a couple more months and then say, gee, I'm just going to wait um, and just see what happens, or do I go with the 780 tie, um, uh, or so I say with the 970, which is technically a little bit shader less powerful, but at the same time, I then got the benefit of the extra RAM, or do I just go for the 980, but the thing is the 980 doesn't really seem that worth it to me. Um, so I think personally, from my own personal standpoint right now, I'm probably just going to stick with the 780 tie. I'm just going to tell you, honestly. It just doesn't seem worth it as kind of a side grade, which it really is, to be honest. From the 780 or 780 tie to a Maxwell, it's almost like a side grade, unless you've got specific reasons to j make the jump. But especially for me, as I'm only recording a 1080p generally anyway for the sake of YouTube, there's no point, I mean, what am I going to do? Recording 1440, it's not really feasible all the time, so, you know, it, it just makes sense to stick to 1080, because that's what the vast majority of you watch it in anyway. I have made some 1440p videos in the past, and, you know, most of you stuck to 720 slash 1080, which I don't blame you for, but, you know, it's, I'm just saying. So... That's the problem, to be honest. Um, I'm, I'm just thinking out loud. The other issue is that with the stack to dies and so on, and the fact that we're going to be seeing supposedly a 20NM Maxwell, and the fact that we're going to be seeing um, naturally the 980 tie, as well as other parts, and probably price crashes as well, it... I don't. I, I would personally recommend to wait if you can on the GPU side of things. But I've got to say, I'm extremely excited to see what AMD come out with. Personally, I'm. 
I, I don't like to stick to one side or the other because I don't think it's I, I don't think it's uh, good to be kind of biased. And I've I own both GPUs. I've kind of gone between all of them. Also, really miss 3D effects. Rip. Anyway, um, I personally would really like to see AMD become extremely competitive to Nvidia to the point where it's literally a toss-up of what what you prefer, the red or the green side. So in other words, only the really diehards would automatically choose the other card. I would like to I'd like for it to become a really good price battle and for people to say, well, gee, um do I want hardware physics or do I want mantle? Do I want this technology or do I want that technology? And then it becomes a lot more arguable. And I think that would be really good for the GPU industry and really good for the PC gaming industry. So previously the the R9 to the R9 the 290 and the 290X, particularly the 290X, ran a bit too hot, if I'm totally honest, and had a bit too high of a power draw. And the price was really good until basically miners started to get hold of the card, and then the price just went up astronomically. So I'm hoping that doesn't become the case again. Um, and I'm hoping that AMD can manage to control their pricing structure better than what they have. With that said, um, of course, you're always going to have markets for like the titans of the world anyway. And we all know that the Titan Z sold as well as Nvidia had hoped, despite the fact that it had an astronomically high price, ra uh, price bracket and the fact that, to be honest, it wasn't worth it. Because two titans actually outperformed the Titan Z anyway. But anyway, that's, it's kind of getting off the beaten path, but I want to let you guys know this stuff anyway. So hopefully you've enjoyed the video, I'll see you soon, take care, bye for now.